Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. We have with us today James Campbell, who is a non-executive director of Sheffer Gems, which is a company in Israel focused exclusively on mining exploration of precious stones. And joining him, we have Andy Morrison, an investor in the company. So first of all, welcome guys. How are you? Very good indeed, Rob, and it's lovely to join you on this podcast. Good to be here, Rob. So James, do you want to just give us a brief introduction of uh, Sheffer Gems for those people who are listening? Absolutely, Rob. Sheffield Gems was listed on the main board of the London Stock Exchange in December of the year before last after having done almost 20 years of work on its primary deposit, Mount Carmel, in the land of Israel, and its secondary deposit, the Kishon Midreach project, which we're going to be talking about in, in this particular podcast. It has a mine to market strategy designed to commercialize this unique suite of gemstones, which includes diamond, moissanite, sapphire, ruby, and many more. And its target is to start commercial mining during the course of next year. Great. Now, Andy, I'm interested, uh, as you're an investor, the, the company completed an investor tour at the site of uh, Mount Carmel. Do you think uh, you can point out what were the key points you took away for that site visit? Yes, um, we um, very much enjoyed the site visit. There were, I think, uh, four or five of us investors. We were accompanied by the company's broker, uh, Greg Mahoney from SI Capital. And we visited the, the source rocks in the Mount Carmel area. And we also were able to visit the, uh, the mining site, uh, it was a proposed mining site in the alluvial plains of the, uh, of the Kishon River. Uh, and I think what we took away from that was uh, that the, there was a tremendously good uh, geological understanding of uh, how the gems were formed and brought to uh, to the surface and how they made their way down to the uh, uh, the riverbed and uh, when we could when we went down to the riverbed we could see how uh, it's very simple mining operation is expected in the future it's about digging up the gravels from the the riverbed and sorting them out to find the gemstones it's a very simple ecologically uh, simple and effective uh, mining operation that's uh, envisaged. And we also visited the, the processing facility at a town called uh, Akko, uh, which is already ready and raring to go. Indeed, it's already been used for processing uh, uh, bulk samples, uh, and it's ready then to uh, uh, start processing the, uh, the mining, um, the, the, pro the products from the mining when they're, when they're ready. So I think what we were really impressed by as investors was the fact that there is a clear understanding uh, it's a simple operation, and it's ready to go. That was basically the story we came away with. Okay, and uh, who did the investors uh, meet while you're on site? We we were able to meet with a number of the uh, the company's uh, advisory uh, team and uh, directors and, uh, uh, and management. Um, amongst the advisors, we uh, met uh, Dr. John Ward and uh, Professor Mike DeWitt, who are uh, eminent uh, uh, geologists in the field of alluvial uh, diamonds. Uh, we met uh, Pierre Fouli, who's a mining engineer, who again is one of the uh, company's key uh, external uh, advisors. Amongst the management team, we met uh, um, the chief operating officer, Vered Toledo, and David Ben David, the chief financial officer. So we were able to have commercial as well as technical uh, discussions. And we also had discussions with uh, a lady called Tal Wenger, who's a partner at the consulting firm who's leading on the project management of the whole mining application and ultimately the, uh, uh, the, the mine development plan. Okay, so busy time for you then. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Andy, there's a term mine to market strategy. Do you want to uh, give us a bit more of an understanding of what that actually means? I think what, um, what we understood as investors from that is that uh, the company wants to make, uh, make best use of the un unusual, unique suite of, uh, of gems that it has in the uh, Kishon River Valley in order not simply just to sell them in bulk to, uh, uh, to, to uh, all comers, but to market them and gain as big a premium as it can in the marketplace for the uh, unique gems, including the moissanite and the Carmel Sapphire. And so for this, therefore the strategy uh, goes right from the mining, which we saw in detail, to the marketing, which is under development. And I think one of the other takeaways that we had from the, the visit was that uh, the the, co the commercialization, the marketing stream is something which now really needs to be uh, to be geared up. Um, and because we want to make sure, I think that uh, as investors, that uh, once the once the product comes from the mine, that there's a ready market for it. And I think we felt that uh, 
now is the time really to uh, accelerate the uh, the marketing uh, uh, strand of the uh, mind to market strategy. And I think that was a very helpful discussion that we had with the company at the time. We noted that uh, you have a marketing deal with uh, Yossi Harari. Um, that looks uh, pretty exciting. Can you tell us more? Yes. Um, from the, what understanding I have is that a, 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 um, they designed a total of 31 uh, pieces uh, which uh, um, featured the uh, gemstones from the uh, the Kishon River Valley, from the uh, the mine, from the sampling that has been done, and they were they were made into very outstanding and unusual uh, jewellery, uh, which was showcased um, in the in Israel, but also in the in the United States. A number of those pieces have been sold. Indeed, the uh, the point of that exercise really was to to start to build the awareness of the um, the very unusual uh, gemstone suite, but also to establish uh, valuation for the the Carmel Sapphire and the, and the Moissanite, uh, which were, came out at the upper end of their ranges. I can't remember the exact numbers now, but the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Yossi Harari collection has been something which has definitely uh, uh, begun to showcase the marketing and something which we can build on. But I don't think that we would necessarily expect to be only using Yossi Harari for uh, the future. And uh, not to steal all the questions in, Andy, uh, James, um, do you want to tell us what the next steps are for uh, Sheffer Gems, uh, the near-term developments, uh, et cetera, and what uh, investors can expect from Sheffer in the next quarter? Ab absolutely, Rob. There, there are four main work streams the company is uh, working towards at the moment. Uh, the first and most important one is to actually uh, achieve what they call in Israel a discovery certificate, which then paves the way for authorization of a mining license. Uh, this is the, the regulatory requirements in Israel and is absolutely key for us to progress the project. In parallel with that, there are obviously the, the technical components uh, of the project. As, as Andy has quite rightly said, the, the mining operation is a, a very simple uh, load and haul operation with uh, concurrent rehabilitation. Uh, the processing is also a, a very simple scrubbing, screening uh, and, and gravity fed uh, operation followed by hand sorting. And all this is guided by a, a technical economic assessment, which we did last year. There are two other very important work streams as well. Uh, the third one is the completion of uh, sampling in the Kishon Midreach Zone 2. Uh, zone 1 has been flagged for uh, trial mining commencing next year. And Zone 2 is immediately contiguous to Zone 1, which would allow us to possibly uh, double, if not more, uh, the life of mine. And then another point that Andy picked up on earlier was the marketing work stream. We have done some test marketing with Yossi Harari, uh, which characterized the unique suite of gemstones in, in a unique uh, design, uh, which looked very much like that the jewels came from the Holy Land, so maximizing on that. But we do need to start looking at other uh, marketing streams because there won't be one single channel. Uh, there'll be many channels. Uh, and maybe just a kind of a flag on the marketing side, seeing that maybe many of your listeners will be familiar with the diamond market and, and the diamond market not being so uh, well at the moment. Uh, prices in the lower end of goods have dropped something like 30 percent. Well, the colored diamond market has done very, very well indeed. And where we are with Shefford Gems, we are, will be mining sapphire and, and ruby and other colored gems. And, and this market is in 2018, $22 billion and continuing to grow at a compound asset growth rate of over 5%. So we're certainly looking to exploit that and also exploit the uniqueness uh, of the location of these mineral suites. Oh, it's a big target to aim for. And uh, I'm going to thank you guys uh, for spending some time talking to us and um, giving us a good understanding of the company. And uh, what we'll do is obviously follow up with another podcast with our investors and delve more into the company. Uh, so uh, for the time that you spent today, thanks uh, once again for both of you. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks a lot then, Rob. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.